Hi everyone, Dr. Omi from Pain Free and Fit Apostasize. Today we've got a great video for those of you with neck or cervical spine degenerative disc disease. It helps to train head position and posture to increase your coordination and your strength and conditioning of protecting your neck during daily activities. Hope you enjoy. So many of us with degenerative disc disease in the neck or cervical spine have aggravations during the day when we have forward motions. The neck posture many times that's aggravating a cervical degenerative disc disease is forward head posture where the ear is in front of the shoulder. In normal good spinal biomechanics, normal posture, the ear should be centered right above the shoulder. Many times from forward activities like reading, typing, working forward, the head has a tendency to translate. When we're positioning ourselves to do a forward activity, such as reaching for something in the cabinet, such as working out and doing rows or bending forward with squats, many times this forward head position will be accentuated because the weakness of the neck muscles and the incoordination of the body, the dysfunctional movement pattern, has become such that any type of forward motion is started or begun with the head moving forward followed by the torso. Many times if you notice people with chronic neck pain, they'll move first from the neck and then the body will follow as opposed to stabilizing the neck and allowing the hip, which is our center of gravity, our center of motion for the whole body to begin the motion and allow the torso to come forward so we get into our activities. So one of the nice exercises we can use just with a pair of dumbbells, you can start light to begin, is learning neck stabilization with that forward motion. Now, if you haven't yet done so, go to the posture size of the painfreeandfit.com website because many of us with cervical degenerative disc disease will be aggravated not only by forward head posture, but by such postural abnormalities as an elevated shoulder, a rounded shoulder posture, a tendency to head tilt to one side or another, a tendency to rotate the head one side towards another. So if you take that free body analysis and learn about your unique mechanics and your movement tendencies, you'll be better able to hold your neck and shoulder complex into a safe and neutral spine position so you don't aggravate yourself during this exercise. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a pair of rather light dumbbells. We're going to set ourselves up so our shoulders are square, meaning that they're flat on the front and not rounded. If you have a tendency to round one more than another, that side needs to be pulled back, obviously, more than another. We're going to set and make sure that if one shoulder likes to elevate, we're going to hold it down. If it has a tipped shoulder blade, we're going to hold the bottom forward. And we're going to correct any head disturbances. If we have a tendency to tilt left, let's say, we're going to tilt a little right towards neutral. And above all, we're going to work on pulling the face towards the back of the head. And we're going to maintain that head back as we learn to bend from the hips. If you notice, my whole upper body is moving forward from my hip joint through my head to get into a forward flexed position, to do work, to reach for something, to work on something. We're going to use the dumbbells now. We have a variety of exercises. You could perform rows where you're pulling back with those dumbbells. You can perform reverse flies where your arms are coming out to the side. The whole time you're focusing on keeping the head back as you're doing this. Your shoulder complex is working with the head back. That's what we're trying to train. You can train cross pulls where we're keeping the head back and the dumbbell comes across. You can perform lateral pulls. Any of those motions are accentuating the head back as the shoulder blade moves. As opposed to using dumbbells, you can also use a band for this. You can bend forward and emphasize again the head back as you bend from the hip and do your band work. You can do horizontal pulls out to the side. You can do curls as you come up. You can even do pushes as opposed to pulls where you position yourself with the band behind you, say a split stance or lunge position, and as you bend from the hip with the head back and the shoulders in position, you're working forward now. You can do that at various angles as well. The more angles, the more resistance that you use, you're going to be training yourself to any forward position keeping the head back is going to not only strengthen the stability muscles, but it's going to strengthen the coordination. Movement is a compound movement of the whole body many times. And for those of us with degenerative disc disease of the cervical spine and neck, many of us begin those motions only with the neck and we're not stabilizing neck and shoulders and allowing our whole body to move from the hips. The more you practice movements like this, the more you build up repetitions, the more you build up strength and endurance in these exercises, the more you'll be conditioning your body to hold your cervical spine and neck in a neutral position and over time have a lot less aggravations 
of your cervical degenerative disc disease. If you like this video on cervical degenerative disc disease training, feel free to subscribe to our channel. We've got a lot of great videos out there. Give me a thumbs up below. Help me share this valuable information with more people that are suffering with cervical degenerative discs. And remember, if you're looking for a customized program to develop your neck strength, conditioning, and anti-pain effects through rehabilitative exercises you can do at home, check out our neck healing exercise program available at painfreeandfit.com. I hope this video on neck training and position with forward motions helps you with your cervical degenerative disc disease.